What's going on Babylonians? It's me, Songs of Rays, back with some more The Finals Guides. Now in today's video, we'll be having a look into the roller coaster of a rifle that is the LH-1, and why it's being currently slept on by the community, at least in my opinion. Now this gun's history has been that of a broken gun with no peers, to massively nerfed and at the point of unusable, to now having a resting place as a rifle amongst lightnings, fast SMGs and double barrel shotguns. So where does this leave the LH-1? Is it usable in the finals? Can it compete against the other 8 weapons that the light has? And most importantly, is it a good choice for ranked? All this and more will be answered in the video, so why don't we start by looking at the weapon's basic stats first. Base damage wise, the LH-1 is a monster, boasting a whopping 47 points of damage per hit to the body and an insanely strong 2x multiplayer to the head, matching that of the SR-84 sniper rifle. This means that you're looking at a 4, 6 or even an 8 shot body, body shot kill on each of these classes and half of that if they're all, every single shot of those is a headshot, meaning that we're going to be having a 2, 3 or 4 shot to kill respectively. Now this damage profile is all about rewarding the player for having accuracy, so any headshots that you do land will reduce the number of body shots to kill a target by two. So in theory, a light can be killed with one headshot and two body shots, a mediums in one headshot and four body, and any other combination that you can think of. So headshots are always viable with this weapon, and it's in the player's best interest to go for them when possible. The crazy part about this damage profile is that a light with the LH-1 has the fastest time to kill against a heavy in the whole game weapon-wise, clocking in at 562 milliseconds compared to the next closest options of the SH-1900 and the SA-1216, both at 600 milliseconds. Both considerable monsters when they're in the arena. So we're off to a great start, a rifle with an insane possible time to kill if your aim is true, but the fun doesn't stop there with the LH-1, as it boasts one of the best range profiles for the light class, keeping that insane damage profile out to as far as I could test in the practice arena. Now over 85 meters and still being able to two tap lights will cover most, if not all, of your practical fights in the quest for those cash boxes. This makes the SR-84 and the LH-1 as unique options for the light class, giving them another way to take fights at range, especially as the most popular picks tend to fall off after a 15 meters. Now with all these highlights would come at a cost, but in the case of the LH-1 it kind of comes with two, with one being worse than the other. For starters, the LH-1 boasts one of the lowest fire rates in the game for a gun, clocking in at what should have been 300 RPM according to the patch notes, but upon testing myself it seems to clock in at around about 320. Now this is still painfully slow, meaning you'll be punished harshly for any missed shots, especially in the TTK area. Other guns like the XP-54 and the M11 can afford to miss some shots due to their rapid rate of fire, and this isn't a luxury that the LH-1 can afford, at least not close up. Now the second of the drawbacks and one that can be mitigated once you get used to the gun is the magnitude of the recoil the gun brings per shot. Having a low rate of fire should translate to a faster recenter of the gun and while it seems that that is the case between beta, close beta 2 and launch, the LH1 still has a monster of a kick behind every single shot. Now fortunately this is pretty much straight vertical with a sway of left and right in the mix as you go further into the magazine spam, being up close and relatively close to mid range you can get away with spamming the trigger while just pulling down on your mouse or analog stick, landing the vast majority of your shots. Now the true LH1 truly is a gun to master to get the most out of, but once you do have the hang of it, the LH1 will offer you so much killing potential. So with the above in mind, why is it that the LH1 doesn't see more play? Why are most lights running the XP-54 or the V9S, or save that, the SH-1900? Well the reason for this is twofold, the three weapons mentioned are easier to pick up from the get go and still be able to do well with. The XP is widely considered one of, if not the main weapon for all lights should unlock as soon as they jump into the game. Now the second is due to the ups and downs of the gun, as not many people have thought about picking it up, especially after the shocking display it had in the last closed beta before launch. It's easy to see why people would look past this gun, even more so once you see all the movement options the light class has and assume it's purely a close range class. So that brings us to this video, one where I aim to show you the strengths of the gun and the reasons for why you should spend those 800 VRs on grabbing one of the best and most slept on guns in the game. The three main ways I'm going to be doing this is going to be showing you why light's abilities and kit are perfect for the LH-1, the damage range of the LH-1 overshadows all other guns, and comparison against the other meta weapons in various scenarios. So first up, we, have, we all know that the light class is the king and queen of movement in the finals. Fast movement speed, amazing abilities, and a grenade to help with invisibility, the light class really does have the makings of a great DPS machine, perfect for what the LH-1 is made for. 
Now, starting with the abilities, all help enable the damage of the LH1 in a variety of playstyles. If you want to poke from afar and utilize the most from the damage range of this gun, then Grapple can help you get up high up, high up and locations fast and primed ready to take pot shots at all you want with relative safety. Now, if you prefer the up close and personal route, then helping you land those important headshots and lessen the recoil issues, then Cloak is made for you, allowing you to dip in and out of combat and working angles, getting a pick for your team and making it easier to mop up. Lastly, the dash helps the more traditional player, giving you directional movement to get in and out of situations and control the range and fight so it's always on your terms. It also helps as a mini version of grapple, offering some verticality to the dash while looking up while casting, allowing you to find angles players won't necessarily expect. Whichever way you run your light class, you'll be sure that the LH1 works amazingly either way. Gadget-wise, the LH1 loves two things in particular, residual damage and glitch grenades. The latter should be stable in every single light loadout, giving support to your team, but most importantly, stopping abilities and gadgets from working, disabling healing beams, defibs, and those pesky shields that heavies can pop up to absorb your bullets. Residual damage can come in many forms. Frags are great for objective rooms, pyros and gas are great for attacking, and also defending a cash out for a few seconds, but whichever you choose, the LH1 benefits from. The reason why is in some cases the LH1 can do so much damage that it leaves classes with a sliver of HP left, meaning residual damage or even a quick melee is all that's needed for the kill. Case an example, a headshot and a body shot on a light class leaves them with 9 total HP, so try to reduce them by weakening teams before pushing and make sure to use your utility to help you out with scenarios just like this. While testing the LH1 for its damage over range, I couldn't believe how far this gun could reach out with no loss to its killing potential. Even after 85 meters, we could still land headshots and we could still down heavies in four headshots, lights in two, and the whole thing was baffling to say the least. To give you an idea as to how good this is, the XP-54, probably one of the best weapons for the light class, cannot headshot any further after 25 meters, but would also drop off from a 9 shot body kill to light to a 13, and for heavies going from 20 body shots all the way to a whopping 30. So it's safe to say the LH1 has got the range category in spades, making it great for any engagement where teams are far away or running to the objective. Got the time? Land that headshot for a quick chunk of health and watch that push get delayed. Now understandably, you won't have the lightning quick headshot TTKs at that range, as recoil and movement from the enemy players will most likely mean you'll miss any kind of follow-up, but it's a great tool for making a team think twice about pushing you that way without another plan, or while they wait out the health region. Lastly, I wanted to put the LH1 against its competition in the light class arsenal, looking at how it performs in ranges you'll likely encounter in certain firefights. For this test, I've looked at drop-offs of 10, 15, 20 and 25 meters, sorting them by their TTK values for the heavy class. Now starting with the 10 meter range, interestingly you'll notice that there isn't much between all four weapons in this study when it comes to body shots against light classes, with the differences being stretched out a little bit more as we start to move into the heavy class. The LH1 does seem to suffer slightly when we look at pure body shots, comparing that to the V9S, the pistol has a faster fire rate, less recoil, and also having a better body shot time to kill. Now as we start to move further back, the V9S does drop off to be worst in class, with the XP and the LH1 start to move up due to their extended range properties, allowing them to keep their great damage profiles. But it's when we get to 20 meters and onwards that the LH1 becomes the best in slot, even killing in 0.8 of a second less than the V9S can even manage. Now if we flip this over to the headshot TTK though, it's not even close to being a competition, with the LH1 running away with it from the start and never looking back, even killing 4 times faster than what the V9S can do after 15 meters. Now of course no one's going to be 100% accurate all of the time, it's just not possible, it's not feasible, but with these figures in mind and the absurd range profile that the LH1 boasts, giving flexibility to the light class to tackle all ranges, whether it be close or whether it be far, I think people have overlooked this weapon and I'm urging you to give it a try and see how it feels for you. But these are just my thoughts on the LH1 and its strength in the finals, so this is where I want to be able to hear from you. How do you feel about the LH1? Have you picked it up and given it a go? Do you think it needs a buff or a nerf? Let me know all of that down below. Massive thank you for making your way to the end of the video. Massive thank you to the Babylonian family, as always, for their continued support. From me and the guys at Babylon, we wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So keep yourself safe, keep yourselves well, and we'll see you all on our next video.